Hello, welcome to Nursing with Professor B. My name is Bridget. I have a master's degree in nursing education. I'm also a family nurse practitioner, and this is my fur baby, Bella. Bella, say hi. In today's video, I will be going over parts of the brain and what each part of the brain does. What does the frontal lobe control, the occipital, the temporal, etc. All right, but before we get started, make sure you hit the like button, make sure you subscribe, and make sure you turn on that notification bell. Let's go. This video is purely for educational purposes only. Please always consult your primary care physician if you have any questions or concerns. So the brain controls what? The cerebrum is the largest part of the brain and it performs higher functions. The cerebellum is located under the cerebrum and we'll go into what this controls in a little bit. And the brain stem acts as a relay center and it's responsible for basic life functions. Let's start with the cerebellum. The cerebellum is located under the cerebrum and its function is to coordinate muscle movements, maintain posture and balance. So if someone has trauma to this area, their balance or coordination would be off. That's why sometimes in a concussion, people walk a little different, almost like they're drunk, uh, because their cerebellum is affected. Now the brainstem is responsible for basic functions such as breathing, such as you don't have to think in your day-to-day -day life, you don't have to tell your brain, okay, take a breath now, and you don't have to tell your heart, all right, beat, 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 right? So um, imagine if you had to control all of that. It would be very, very overwhelming. You wouldn't have time to do anything else other than keep yourself alive. So the brainstem performs many of the automatic fun functions, which is breathing, heart rate, regulating body temperature, wake and sleep cycles, coughing, vomiting, swallowing. This is where your forehead would be. Just to give you a little bit of reference to what we're doing, this is the back of your head. The frontal lobe is located directly behind your forehead and it's the largest lobe in the human brain. It's also the most common region of injury in a traumatic brain injury. Just visualize how your brain, when you, if you're in a car accident or if somebody hits you, they're gonna hit your forehead, right? If you're in an accident, your brain is going to get smashed forward and backwards. So that's coup and contra coup. This is the area that is responsible for higher level executive functions. Your frontal lobe is responsible for personality, behavior, emotions, judgment, planning, problem solving, speech, speaking and writing. Broca's area is located in the frontal lobe. Body movement, intelligence, concentration, and self-awareness. And there's also a motor strip in, in the frontal lobe. So if you get damage to your frontal lobe, it can result in loss of simple movement of various body parts inability to make a sequence of complex movements. So for example, sometimes they won't be able to be to make their coffee anymore because it requires getting the coffee maker out, putting a, a filter, coffee, pouring water in the coffee maker, that sequence of events they won't be able to do anymore. Loss of spontaneity in interacting with others, inability to express language, which is Broca's aphasia. I also recorded a Broca's aphasia video today. If you're interested in watching that video, loss of flexibility and thinking, persistence of a single idea or behavior, the inability to focus on a task and to filter out distractions, mood fluctuations, they may have emotional lability, so one minute they're happy, one minute they're angry, difficulty problem solving, difficulty inhibiting or controlling a response or impulse. I maybe will do a video on the curious case of Phineas Gage. And um, he was basically a railroad worker and a metal rod transversed his frontal lobe and it completely be changed who he was. Before he was responsible, kind individual. And after that, he was an angry individual, sexually inappropriate, violent. So when your frontal lobe is damaged, all of a sudden you have poor Poor, uh, poor impulse control and difficulty inhibiting inappropriate behaviors. So I'll just give a very crude um, example. For example, a guy finds a girl attractive. He knows that it's not appropriate to just go up to her and kiss her, right? But someone who has difficulty in inhibiting inappropriate behavior is just going to go up to her and kiss her because that's he has that urge and he has trouble inhibiting that urge. 
They may have a reduced motivation and initiation and persistence on activities, reduced awareness and reduced insight into their behavior, changes in social behavior, changes in personality. Also, Broca's area would be around here, Broca's, and then Wernicke's actually is in the posterior temporoparietal. So, um, so it actually transverses the temporal and the parietal. It actually transverses the temporal and the parietal. It doesn't go into the occipital lobe. With the pari in the parietal lobe, that's where you interpret language, words. You have proprioception, which is your knowing where in the environment your body is. Sense of touch, pain, temperature, and the sensory strip. The sensory strip is around here. The motor strip in the frontal lobe is around here. They, you can interpret signals from vision, hearing, motor, sensory, memories also, their spatial and visual perception. If there's damage to the parietal lobe, it can result in difficulty with drawing objects, difficulty in distinguishing left from right, spatial disorientation and navigation difficulties, not knowing where in your environment you are, knowing, not knowing for example, that if if I have a spatial distortion, I may be standing too close to someone because I think I'm further away than what I am. Problems with reading, inability to locate the words for writing, difficulty with mathematics, lack of awareness of certain body parts and or surrounding space, inability to focus visual attention, and difficulty with motor planning and complex movements. Next, we move to the temporal lobe. And the temporal lobe is located right behind the ear. And that can trigger you into what does the temporal lobe do? And it's associated with processing auditory information. If it's behind the ears, it helps with hearing. And that's in the temporal lobe is Wernicke's area, which helps understand language, memory, hearing, sequencing, and organization. And Wernicke's area is around here, it would be around this area here. It goes into the parietal and the temporal. The temporal lobe is also believed though to play an important role in processing affect and emotions. So if someone has damage in this area, they may have a flat affect, which I thought was interesting because again, with my experience in mental health, a lot of individuals with, uh, with schizophrenia they experience auditory hallucinations, which a lot of times is due to abnormalities in the temporal lobe, maybe the temporal lobe misfiring. And if affect is processed in the temporal lobe, that would make sense to why a lot of these individuals a lot of times will have, will have a bizarre affect or incongruent or a very flat affect. It also plays a role in language and certain aspects of visual perception. So once again, with schizophrenia, they can have auditory hallucinations, vis visual hallucinations. So if there's damage to the temporal lobe, someone would have difficulty in understanding spoken words, which would be receptive aphasia or Wernicke's aphasia. Difficulty with identifying and categorizing objects. Difficulty learning and retaining new information. Impaired factual and long-term memory persistent talking, difficulty in recognizing faces, increased or decreased interest in sexual behavior, and emotional disturbance, such as aggressive behavior. Lastly, we have the occipital lobe. And the occipital lobe is at the very back of the head and it's responsible for visual perception, including color, form, and motion. Damage to the occipital lobe would look like difficulty with locating objects and environment, difficulty with identifying colors, production of hallucinations, visual illusions. So this person would inaccurately, visual illusion would be in a misinterpretation of, of a real stimulus. Word blindness, inability to recognize words, difficulty in recognizing drawn objects, and inability to recognize the movement of an object, difficulty with reading and writing. The cerebellum is uh, Latin for little brain, and it's located just above the brainstem and tucked underneath the cerebral cortex towards the back of the brain. It's involved with coordination of voluntary motor movement, balance, equilibrium, and muscle tone. Muscle tone. Damage to the cerebellum would include loss of ability to coordinate fine movements, loss of ability to walk, 
inability to reach out and grab objects, tremors, dizziness, slurred speech, and inability to make rapid movements. Mm -hmm.